I hope you've had a good week um, and that you're still enjoying your time at home and not in school. Last week, we looked at how God showed his love to us. While we were still God's enemies, Jesus died for us. I'm so excited about what we're going to learn this week. But before we get there, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everything that you have done for us and continue to do. Thank you that you're always with us and that you love us. Help us to understand your word and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, this week, I have spent a lot more time at home on my phone and on my computer, browsing the internet to see if there's something interesting. I found a lot of funny videos and also some really fun facts and cool things to read. One of these things is a long list of the 32 most interesting fears or phobias. Now, we don't have time to share all of the 32 fears today, but I have met, made my own top five list. So here we go. This is my top five most interesting fears. Number five, turophobia, a fear of cheese. In fourth place, we have anatodeophobia. This is the fear of being watched by a duck. In third place, we've got olophobia. This is a fear of flutes. Second, we have plutophobia. I don't understand this one at all, but it's a fear of money. So not a fear of not having money, a fear of having it. And in first place, hippopotamont... Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this. This is a fear of long words. So while these fears are very uncommon and we can laugh at them um, when we think of them, there are so many things in life that we get scared of. The fears we have are real and it can be very difficult when we feel afraid. I want to let you guys in on a little secret. I get scared a lot. I'm quite scared of flying in an airplane. I feel afraid when I'm alone. I sometimes fear really big thunderstorms and a whole bunch of other things. And this week with coronavirus and staying at home for 21 days or maybe longer, we don't know, I've really felt scared too. But today I would like to tell you guys about one big thing that we never have to fear if we trust in Jesus. If we trust Jesus, we don't ever have to fear God's judgment or wrath. So we are going to unpack this a bit and start by look looking at who God is and what we as people owe him. So God made everything. He made us too and everything belongs to him. God our creator deserves all our praise, all our honor, all our love, all the glory, all the thanks and all of our hearts. But instead of giving God this, we sin. Since Adam and Eve disobeyed God, all people in history sin against God. And I mentioned this verse last week. Remember Romans 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let's look at some ways in which we sin. So we sin when we miss God's mark. As a holy God, God wants us to reflect his image on earth and he has set a holy standard for us to live by. But we miss this mark all the time and fail to live up to his standards. We sin when we break God's law. Remember the 10 commandments? If we don't obey them, we are guilty of sin. We also sin when we willfully disobey God. So sometimes we know what is right, we know which way God wants us to go, and we deliberately choose to turn away from him. We also sin when we act selfishly. So when we love ourselves and we want to do what makes us happy, more than loving God and loving people, we are sinning. And finally, we sin when we worship idols. So when other things or people or anything else, it can even be a good thing, becomes more important to us than God, we are guilty of idolatry. 
which is sin. So sin is a big deal. It hurts us. It hurts the people around us. And most of all, it always hurts God. Because we sin, instead of giving God what he truly deserves, we owe him a great big debt. And we deserve his wrath or judgment. Now, wrath is the just anger of God that we deserve for our sin. Romans 6 verse 23 says, the wages for sin is death. In other words, when we sin, we deserve death. This means life without God forever, but also life without good things forever, because all good things come from God. And God is not only the creator of everything, he is also just. So he must punish sin and judge us. If he just pretended that we didn't sin, he wouldn't be good and fair. It would be like this. Imagine someone breaks the law and they go to court. They have to face the judgment and punishment for what they have done wrong. It would make no sense if the judge just got really angry and then sent them home. So we must all face God's judgment for our sin against him. We also need to pay the full price for our sin. Imagine the same judge says to a criminal, what you have done deserves three years in prison, but it's okay, you can go home after two months. That wouldn't be right either. So because we have sinned against God, who is eternal and holy, we as people deserve his judgment and to pay the full price for our sin. But this is a price we can't pay on our own. Now guys, this all sounds very awful and scary and terrible, but we mustn't forget that God is loving and full of mercy. Through Jesus, God has made a way for us to be rescued from his wrath and judgment. Let's look at two verses in the Bible that tells us this. I'm going to read from 1 John uh, chapter four, verse 10. This is towards the end of your Bibles in the New Testament. It says, love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. There's another verse in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, that says this, God made him, this is Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Propitiation is a big word, and you don't have to be scared of it. I'm going to try and explain that now. So imagine you're at your friend's house, and you're playing pool, and everything's going so well, but suddenly you shoot one of the balls off the pool table into the glass sliding door of your friend's house, and it shatters the glass into a million different pieces. Now your friend's parents will be really, really angry, because the glass is broken, and it will cost a lot of money to fix it. But you cause the damage, and you can't pay for it. I mean, you don't earn money yet. But mom and dad can offer to pay for the glass, even though they weren't responsible for breaking it. So your friend's mom will be satisfied, because the price for the damage has been paid. This is a picture of what Jesus has done for us, how he is the propitiation for our sin. Jesus never sinned at all, but he shed his blood and died on the cross and so took the punishment of the entire world upon himself. God's wrath was turned away from us and directed towards Jesus instead. And through this, Jesus paid the full price for our sin We say that God's wrath is satisfied in Jesus. This means that if we trust in Jesus, God says, I am so satisfied with the payment that my son has made that you don't owe me any further payment at all. So God treats Jesus, who wasn't guilty, as if he was guilty. And he treats everyone who trusts in Jesus, who is guilty, as if they are innocent. So while there may be many things to be scared of 
and to fear. We never have to be afraid of God's wrath and judgment if we trust in Jesus. Because God loves us, he has already paid Jesus for our sin. So for those who trust in Jesus, there's no further penalty left to pay. We may still carry on sinning, we will in this life, but when we do, we can run straight to God without any fear of his anger, judgment or punishment. And we can know that he loves us. <laughs>